So Bernie Sanders has released a new housing for all plan, and it is quite extensive, I must admit. Now, it would take literally forever <laughs> to go through everything that Bernie Sanders details in this new plan. However, I am going to go through what I believe are the most important parts. Um, of course, we may leave some stuff out, but I strongly, strongly encourage you to go to Bernie Sanders' website to comb through all of it because he takes into account a lot of different factors that contribute to not only homelessness, but just the lack of affordable housing in general. So I'm going to go through the key parts and I'll, and I'll break down some of my favorite parts of this, this new plan that he's planning on introducing. So he wants mixed income housing, desegregating and integrating communities, high speed broadband internet in all affordable housing that he introduces, a national cap on annual rent increases at no more than 3% or 1.5 times the consumer price index, whichever is higher, to help prevent the exploitation of tenants at the hands of private landlords, allow for states and cities to pass even stronger rent control standards, implement a just cause requirement for evictions, which would allow a landlord to evict a tenant only for specific violations and uh, prevent landlords from evicting tenants on arbitrary or retaliatory reasons. Now, there is already laws preventing landlords from evicting for retaliatory reasons, but I'm going to explain why it's very uh, important for us to readdress this issue. Um, and I'll even use a personal experience of mine. Uh, he also wants to create an office within the Department of Housing and Urban Development to coordinate the work with state excuse me to coordinate and work with states and municipalities the office would work on preempting laws that prevent inclusionary zoning for luxury developments um so in short that's trying to end gentrification or at least trying to prevent it for as long as possible um he has a quote unquote end homelessness in america portion of the plan or 25,000 national affordable housing trust fund units in the first year of homelessness, excuse me, in the first year to the homeless will be built under his administration. Uh, he wants to double the McKinney Vento homelessness assistance grant, grant to, and he wants to give it to more than 20, oh, he wants to give more than 26 billion over the next five years to build permanent supportive housing. And he wants to give 500 million to homeless outreach to states and localities to make sure that no one is left behind. So overall, as you can see, this is a pretty comprehensive, well thought out affordable housing plan. Uh, and can I just say, if you've not been paying attention, uh, housing and real estate in general is a bigger deal than what people may think it is. In 2006, the United Nations looked at our real estate industry and was able to tell two years before the crash happened that our economy was about to go in the tank. So it's a big deal. Affordable housing, not like, I mean, that's this is your, where you are. If you're not stable, then you can't prosper. Like, that's just basic knowledge in life. <laughs> if you have to live in your car, if you're always worried about, you know, if you're worried about your rent increasing, so you're always trying to uh, uh, uproot yourself and then set your roots somewhere else, whether it be in a different location within the city or having to constantly change from state to state just to be able to find affordable housing. That's not uh, a good way to build uh, security and wealth for yourself. And if you can't build security and wealth for yourself, well, multiply that by 700 million people. Ultimately, the entire economy suffers. So some of my favorite parts of this legislation are is the mixed income housing. So I can't stress enough how important this is. Coming from a background where I myself was poor, I came from a single mother household who had to work two or three jobs most of the time, but I was fortunate enough to go to a school where a lot of the people who went there came from, uh, I won't say wealthier, some people, yeah, some, I'll put it like that the person who went to my, we had a, a, a hospital in Fayetteville, North Carolina called Cape for Valley Medical Center, and the head of that hospital, his son went to my school, um, the you have a lot of like command sergeant majors and and you know colonels that deployed a lot so they were able to make a lot of money they a lot of their children went to our school um and i learned a lot from the people around me 
because there were certain things that my mother couldn't teach me. Like my mother didn't know how to build wealth. She was too busy trying to keep our head above water. My mother didn't have time to research different universities because she was too busy trying to keep our head above water. She was doing her best to put me in a position to, to uh, figure that stuff out on my own. But I learned a lot from my friend's parents. I learned a lot from my friends who are in, you know, more secure, more financially stable situations. And in turn, it affected my outlook on life where a lot of my friends were looking to go to a local community college. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, I had my sights set on, you know, UNC, Duke, NYU, Harvard, because it took somebody who was actually from that system, if you will, um, to, you know, let me know, hey, you have the capability to be here. It's not as difficult as you think. And here's the path you could take. Even when it came to sports, um, I ran track and field in high school and one of my really good friends, uh, her father actually took the time out to train me, bought me my first pair of cleats, uh, for triple jump. I did triple jump and long jump and he brought me my first pair of cleats. My mother, track cleats are, were a luxury first of all. And then, you know, we already couldn't afford my shoes. I only bought like one pair of shoes a year, <laughs> you know, or excuse me. So, so, so you got your summertime pair and then your, your, um, you get one for Christmas. And that was basically how that went. Um, he bought me my first pair of cleats and I was extremely successful because he had the experience, but also he was able to invest in me. So these are the type of relationships that are created when you are able to mix communities. You're, it's, it's, like going, it's like when you're at work, right? And you're trying to get that supervisor position. You think you're ever gonna get the supervisor position by mingling with a bunch of followers? No. You, you, you have to mingle with one with supervisors, learn from them. You have to mingle with other potential leaders, people who are thinking in the same, have the same mindset as you. Uh, and you have to also, once again, and this is for everybody, I don't care where you are. Like you have to be lucky enough to encounter someone who looks at you and says, you have that potential um, and we can cultivate that. And I believe in you. You have a lot of a, a greater chance of encountering that in a mixed income, desegregated housing community where you're sharing the same bus as them, playing in the same sporting leagues as them, taking the same classes and going to the same schools as them than you do in a segregated community, whether it be by race or by income. Um, I like the 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 um, preempting and the, the, the preemptive laws to prevent ex inclusionary zoning for luxury developments because this is something we've seen taking advantage people taking advantage of a lot uh just here in miami i live in a neighborhood that was once called little havana it still is but they rezoned us against the wishes of the uh the the planning the city planner they basically so no offense to my white friend but there's a lot of white people moving to miami now they made it a lot more comfortable for white people to live here you know so a lot of white people moving here uh, and they're gentrifying this particular area, which unfortunately is to be expected. But if you're white and you're looking on Google and you say Lil Havana, well, if you don't speak Spanish, that might be a little bit intimidating to you. So what they did was they re rezoned us so that it looks like on a map, officially, we are part of Coral Gables. Now, if you know anything about Coral Gables, that is where the University of Miami is. And the University of Miami is about 15, 10 to 15 minutes away from my house. However, that is a whole different world. <laughs> and we are not Coral Gables, and anybody who lives here will tell you that. Um, but with that, not only do you 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 um, get to build more housing developments here, and you are much more likely to fill those housing developments because if you, once again, if you're looking up a little Havana, you might be a little bit intimidated by that. But if you look up Coral Gables, you're like, oh, that's where University of Miami is. That's got probably a really nice area. Now, what what also comes with that? Once again, gentrification because the housing is going to be more expensive. The property taxes are going to go up because it's going to be based off of Coral Gables property taxes, not based off of um, uh, Little Havana's. The positive part, I guess, in our case, is that some of the schools here will get more funding. Well, so that's good because they are part of Coral Gables, but overall, it is damaging to the community. We've already seen a bunch of small businesses shut down because of it. Uh, we've seen more franchises and chains come in because of it. And so what Bernie's plan will do is stop allowing laws to be basically to be based off of what the luxury condominiums want rather than what's best for the community. 
because the community should always come first. If a community is prospering, then the city prospers, then the state prospers, then the country prospers. If luxury developments prosper, you see people come in from other communities, but they don't, they're not necessarily invested in the community that they move into. Um, and that could be problematic, as we've seen in the past, which is why we have such great income inequality and housing inequality now. The, the homelessness and the, and the homelessness in America is also a pretty huge thing. Um, it's, I mean, what can I say? We need more assistance. And, and I, will, I will say this, when it comes to homelessness in America, it isn't just about homelessness. We have to remember a lot of these people have uh, mental illnesses that they are not getting treated because of Medicare for All, which Bernie's plan would, of course, help to take care of. So that's great. Um, the, the eviction stuff okay so like i said it says implement a just cause requirement for evictions which would allow landlord a landlord to, which would allow landlord to evict the tenant only for a specific violation and prevent landlords for evicting tenants for arbitrary or retaliatory reasons now of course as you all know under the fair housing laws you cannot retaliate to evict someone however they can use an arbitrary reason to cloud that retaliatory conviction <laughs> And this happens over and over again. If anybody lived in like a New York, Florida, even a lot of different states that have really bad housing laws, um, you've seen this. I myself have gone through this. Uh, I was like 15 days on rent, not, not even 15 days at the time. I think it was like 10 days late on rent. Um, however, our leasing contract says if you give notice, then that's fine. You just have to pay a late fee. Not a big deal. Um, so after I paid my rent, didn't matter. They still actually tried to take me to court over this. Now, it turns out that I wasn't the only one that they tried to do this. So they tried to clear out the entire building. Yep. They tried to clear out the entire building doing this, using this method. So anybody who was late more than a day on their rent, they gave a letter to. Now, if you're poor and you're scared and your credit's not that good, and you know, you're going to need a little bit more time to move somewhere. You're not going to take time to defend yourself. You don't know how the court system works. You don't understand half of the things that are being read on that paper. You don't have money to get a lawyer, so what do you do? You don't give them a chance to evict you. You just leave. And that's exactly what happened. I was the only one, especially because this is Miami, so a lot of that language, especially because it's in the, uh, the paperwork they serve you is in English, and even if it is in Spanish, um, or if there is a Spanish translation on there, that's still legal jargon. It doesn't mean you can understand it. <laughs> and a lot of people left. I defended myself, and we got out. You know, I, I dealt with it, and I didn't have any issues after that, but a lot of people, almost in my entire building, except for maybe two people, were cleared out because of this. Bernie's laws, if he was to successfully implement this, helps to prevent this. Because ultimately, it is a poor people who are being evicted for arbitrary means. Um, and then, of course, a lot of the time, what do they do? They use those evictions as an opportunity to raise the rent. That's usually when you'll see this, when there's an opportunity for more money to be made, that's when you'll see these type of like eviction letters being handed out in Massé. So um, overall, I really love this plan. I think it's a great idea. Um, it's it's something that, you know, homelessness is, I feel like an issue that only maybe two or three candidates have taken seriously in this country. Uh, I hear a lot of lip service being paid to it. But I'm very glad that uh, that that Bernie has really dug in and and put together. I mean, yeah, this isn't this isn't the bill. The bill is going to be probably going to be more extensive. But if you go to the website, he his policy team really dug into this issue. Um, they provide a lot of statistics. They provide a lot of info on the policies. And once again, I strongly encourage you to go check it out. Other than that, uh, like, share, comment. We'd love to know what your thoughts are about this. But hey, more than anything else, always remember. Find your balance. Peace. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like that segment of Mikasa Sukasa. Also, you can help us upgrade the studio and take this show on the road to cover the on-the-ground politics that you love by clicking on that GoFundMe link in the description and donating literally anything. Anything helps. Also, you can follow us on Rockfin, on Twitter, and on Facebook as well. And hey, more than anything else, people, always remember, find your balance. Peace.